So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Robin Norgren. I'm the host of Deeply Rooted and this conversation is all around the understanding that everything we do, we say, we connect with or um, on or about um, is spiritual. And it's just finding that place uh, where you recognize that we are all one. So I'm doing a series right now because for many of you um, who have been listening for a while, you know that I am the vitamin lady over at my local Sprouts. And so as I'm learning and growing in alternative medicine and homeopathy and vitamins and everything in between, I thought what a great um, way for those of you who maybe really have never delved into this industry before um, that I could share some of my information and um, learnings, if you will, um, and uh, hopefully it is helpful to you as well. So basically how I approach learning things is I um, basically I'm a hunter and gatherer. And what that means is that when I know I'm starting on something new, uh, such as vitamins, and I have been exposed to it, but just on a very generic um Um, platform. So, you know, take a multivitamin, drink water, that sort of thing. Um, So when I know I'm going into something where it's uh, a little bit over my head, um, I will begin to um, gather information. So I'll go to Um, obviously Google, I'll go to libraries, I um, have this great uh, site that I always go to called dealoz.com and it is a place where all, um, you know, you can type in names of books and it'll show you the best prices new and used, so I go that route as well. And I basically just kind of take about, uh, and I do put a kind of a cap on it, I probably take about three or four days and I just gather as much information as I can in one place and then I make myself stop. I stop and then I start to um, peruse everything that I've gathered. So the book I've been reading lately is a book called The Complete Family Guide to Alternative Medicine and it's basically an illustrated encyclopedia of natural healing. Uh, The editors on this uh, book are... um, well, it's just one editor, C. Norman Shell Sheely, S-H-E-A-L-Y, M.D., Ph.D. And um, so today I wanted to focus on the idea of diets, and in particular, special diets. So there's probably, well, I won't even say, you know, there's a number of diets out there, so I can't... um, you know, cover everything, but I thought I would cover ones that maybe you've heard of before, but you don't really maybe have a a good understanding of what someone means when they say they're on this particular diet. So let's just go ahead and start from there. Um, So the first diet I want to talk about is one called an exclusion diet. An exclusion or elimination type diets are used to detect foods suspected of causing food allergies or intolerance or triggering attacks of illness, such as migraine. Suspected foods are avoided for about two weeks and then reintroduced one at a time. So that's an exclusion diet. Next, we have a vegetarian diet. Vegetarians eat no meat, fish, or poultry but most eat eggs and dairy products. And this is called a lacto-ovo-vegetarianism. A vegetarian diet followed correctly over a long period 
some say, can reduce the risk of heart disease, cancer, and other major illnesses. And again, this is all, you know, it's out there. You can find it anywhere on the internet pros and cons. But again, just trying to give you a general understanding for you to go ahead and take the information if it intrigues you and research on your own. Then there is the vegan diet. Vegans eat no animal products. They need vitamin B12 from fortified foods or supplements. A vegan diet shares most of the benefits of a vegetarian diet when carried out correctly. But again, need some sort of supplement for B12. A food combining diet. Food combining, some people call it the hay diet, H-A-Y, advises against combining starch and sugar with protein and acid fruits. So at least four hours should separate starch and protein meals. Protein, starch, and fats are eaten in small quantities, and all refined and processed foods are prohibited. This diet is said to improve arthritis and digestive problems. Now, the anti-candida diet is for the treatment of flush, and it, you avoid yeasts and mold, as in malted cereals, cheeses, fungi, sugar, and sugary foods, and peanuts. In a liver diet, the following foods are avoided because some alternative therapists believe they are difficult for the liver to process. Meat, poultry, eggs, sugar, sugary foods, dairy, produce, nuts, coffee, tea, alcohol, chocolate, fried food. That is a liver diet. Low blood sugar diet. This diet is based on three meals a day plus two plus small two hourly snacks of nuts or seeds, milk, oat cakes, or whole wheat toast. Sugar and sugary foods must be avoided. And finally, I'd like to cover the macrobiotic diet. So a macrobiotic diet classifies all foods as either yin or yang. The aim is to eat a perfect balance, taking into account the individual's different yin-yang needs. If the equilibrium is upset, ill health results. So food is prepared, cut, and cooked in particular ways to preserve yin-yang characteristics. To create balance, people living in a yang environment, hot and dry, need to become more yin, cold and wet, and vice versa. Yin foods grow in hot, dry climates, such as the Middle East, have stronger smells, are hotter, more aromatic, contain more water, and are therefore softer and juicier. Yang foods grow in cold, wet climates, such as Britain, and are drier, shorter, harder, as in stems and roots and seeds, and are saltier and more sour. The diet is similar to those to that of the traditional uh, Japanese peasant, which consists of 50% cooked whole cereal grains, pasta, bread, porridge, stir-fried rice, or noodles. 25% local seasonal vegetables cooked in a variety of ways, such as raw, pickled, steamed, sautéed, and boiled. 10% is protein drawn from fish, beans, soy bean products like tofu and tempeh. 5% sea vegetables used in soup, stews, and condiments. 5% soups, including miso soup, fish soup, bean soup, vegetable soup, among others. 
and 5% desserts and teas, including simple teas, grain coffees, desserts using fruits and fermented rice, sea vegetables, seed, and nuts. So I hope this was beneficial for you and maybe it has intrigued you to maybe explore maybe a new way to eat. Because I think there are times when you kind of need to change up your diet. Um, of course, to add some variety, but also because I think it gives the body a bit of the organs a bit of a rest and a disruption in the way in which it's being processed. Again, solely my opinion, um, just noticing it from, for myself um, personally. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this segment. And uh, please, if you think anyone would be interested or find this to be valuable information, uh, I would love for you to pass it along. All right, see you back here very soon. Bye.